Meat. Oh, we got a lot of protein in the building. Like, <laughs> Ew, that's yeah. good. That coffee. Kind of hurts me. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot of protein what kind in the of building. Protein? Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> Every cell in your body I needs it. I feel sick. Yeah. Does anybody have some almond milk? Jared's used to no. having the meat sweats Four. anyway. I eat a lot of meat, red meat. It's because I have too much blood. Yeah. Well, we're about to eat some meat. We have a and lot. Hopefully, it's 700 yeah. pounds. Yeah. It's 38 kilograms. Just lots. Yeah, we're short of a side of a measuring cow. it by tonnage, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which we literally have meat smoking right now as we talk. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. Well, welcome, welcome. Scott welcome. and Seth. Thank you, the Beard of Pictures. Hey, that's right. That's thanks, us. Thanks, guys. Yep. Yeah, thank you guys. Logan, JT, thank you. Appreciate it. We got your, we got your lovely, we got, got all the spices of them. here. We got all of the spices. Yes, I've been using the shit out of them. Thank Love you. it. Yeah. So you guys just advertise your beards mostly and. Mm-hmm supply people with lots of protein. Yeah, so um, we're pretty good at killing livestock. Do you kill them? There's a pause there. Or do you just kill the livestock? Or do they do they come kill? They they do you have to do? No, they do it all. See, see, nobody likes the job of wiping its ass and taking its hide off and turning it into food. Yeah, Yeah, that's... That's, that's not a, so that's, fun that's part. That's a tough step. We yeah. do that. Do you skin it? We do. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. And and so we we can do uh, about seven different species really well. Ooh. Probably any okay. species what, that we come what, across. What's in that seven? So our main staples are bison. That's the cornerstone okay. of our, our bison, business. Bison. Yeah. Um, beef. Beef. That's a cow. That's a cow. Yep. Yeah. So butchers like to How say to beef, cow. not cows. Because yeah. we when you milk, buy a, milk a half cows, beef, a full beef, yeah. a quarter beef. Yeah. yeah. Interesting story that we'll, we'll get back I to. I told JT on the way over here, too. Yeah. 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 Um, Why we call it a cow? Pigs, lambs, goats, uh, veal, elk. and then elk. We butcher elk. I think it might be surpassing the seven. And then uh, ostrich is probably the, the wildest yeah, thing we've we, ever. I, I wanna, I, before we move on, I, I have to get this. I, I, I need to know. What's, what's the thing with veal? Is that really different? Um, well, veal or baby cows. Yeah. And so we, we never actually butchered them to market the meat. We just, when we did custom slaughter, which means if you had a veal, you could bring it to us and we'd slaughter it. Um, but what's, I, the, what's the reasoning? Like, what is, why do people, what I, is I, I, pers- I personally don't get tripped out on it because yeah. it, did, it has no flavor. Does it taste right. better? No, does it, it's no. a little it's it's bit more tender, tender. but yeah, yeah. It's, it's tender, but no That's flavor. I mean. kind of like, like you're, you're it's kind of like the, the chicken of beef. Where did that start? Was that a European thing? The veal? I Did that start I in the U.S.? No, yeah. Yeah. no. Yeah, I mean, it is well, used a lot in Italian dishes. I believe in the dairy that, yeah. industry. Yeah. In the dairy industry, you you don't want a, a a male because you can't milk it. Oh, so you just <laughs> so they just well, butchered it. Just just really like, let's get rid of this thing now. So they just started killing them. So like, yeah. Wow. I'm just never, I never understood the veal thing. Cause I did, I, ah, dude, I don't know. I can't taste the difference. No. Yeah, but it's like, why, why would you want to slaughter something that you're only getting one fourth out of? Exactly. Which you could potentially get if you let it grow longer. Yeah. 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 That's what I mean. Like, yeah. We don't, we don't, just full you of just shit? leave it. We don't like, dabble in veal, veal alone. It's it like, turns oh, into a nice juicy steak. Big old right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, oh my God, this veal tastes amazing. Like, can you really taste veal? No. Fuck off. I think it's tasteless. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you'd know the difference. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. elk. Yeah. You guys are butchering elk. Yep. That Live sounds elk. delicious. Like, yep, absolutely. Um, so yeah, we pretty much do it all. So that's one of the tough jobs is like uh, the livestock conversion to like the carcass and then the carcass, you, you know, you age it and then you turn it into, you know, food. What are you guys doing with ostriches? Um, so we haven't done anything recently, but there was They're a big about- fad. Yeah, we, we need to get our hands on one again. Can, yeah. Yeah, so there was a big YouTube. fad like in the late 90s where um, people were raising them for meat. And so at the time we were doing custom butchering. So if you raised them, you could bring them to us and we would slaughter them. They so saturated I, I the killed, market. Killed hundreds of ostriches. They saturated hundreds. the market. Hundreds. How do you take them out? Um, so we use what's called a captive bolt for, oh, just, um, yep. for, for the cattle. And so you would just grab the ostrich by its beak. And you, it, so it was in like this box where it couldn't kick you or whatever. Yeah. And you just pull, pull its head to you and just hit it with this, this bolt gun in the head. Now that's the same thing from No Country for Old Men, It's right? exactly the same that. thing, okay. yeah. yeah. So I the one we used, is, the one he had was air powered. Yeah. Um, we use a black powder one. Oh, wow. but yeah, same principle. Renders the animal unconscious So you guys are waking up at three o'clock in the morning every day. Mm-hmm. You're killing a few cow. 
you're skinning them and cleaning them and then hanging them up in the freezer and then walking to a different part and grabbing one that's been aging for a while and you start cutting it. That is precisely exactly, exactly right. what happened. Yeah. Fucking dream job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, well, yeah. at the time we didn't think so. And that's kind of like, so a lot of it had to do with our dad. Yeah. Um, we talked about how he was a drill instructor. And, and so he, I think he, um, he lived for the kill floor or, you know, he, he doesn't work kill floor any longer, but he, uh, that was his favorite day. So as kids, he would, he would literally holler up the steps and say, you know, it's time to go to kill. And he would get us and out of you, bed. And if you didn't get out of bed, he'd come up and smack you on the feet yeah. and then roll you out of bed and say, it's time for kill. Yeah. So, yeah. So he, he um, loved it. And you guys named all the cows back then when you were kids. So like, <laughs> hey, you're killing no. Ted today. Yeah. yeah. We always said that if, if we went to knock one in the head and it, and it said, hey, don't do this. We were, we were done. Oh, but that yeah. doesn't happen. So we would give it a pass. Sense. Yeah. So yeah, that's how, that's how it started. But then as far as the brand goes, like, so, um, in like 2015, our, our dad was transitioning out of the business and we were like, not so fast. So we, um, we were making select cuts and we were putting a spice on them that Seth was hand blending. And, um, so we made up a sticker that said, um, bearded butcher approved. We just took our dad's face. We literally see yes. that. Yeah. So dad had, uh, since he got out of the military he grew a beard and he'd had one ever since. So he's a bearded butcher. So we, um, we just literally took and put a beard butcher approved um, stamp on the the stuff that was preseason with our spice, and that is uh, our dad's face in the middle of the logo. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. so we're like, man. you're going to be part of this forever. But um, people really liked it. They really liked the uh, spice, and they 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 were you know buying the beard butcher approved stuff. So um, like I mentioned, the recipe was something that Seth came up with, and so this is like twenty. Yeah, I say about 2012. Did you travel to like to India and things like that and sample all these spices? And then you're like, I've got it. No. no. Oh, okay. absolutely not. No. Yeah. Um, ordered it in five pound bags, yeah. sat in the break room and just, you know, a little we're, bit of this. We were looking for something that was like clean. Yeah. So like, uh, and, and no sugar. So we, um, we just made up our own. And so once we started putting in stuff at the meat shop that we were selling, um, you know, people started wanting to buy the actual spice. So we started putting it in shakers and selling We it gave it away way. for a long time. People would yeah. come in and we had like these containers that we'd put sliced liver in and we started using those for seasonings instead. So, you know, people would swing in and be like, hey, you got any more of that spice you gave me last time I was here? So we just started giving it away. And then as it uh, gained popularity, we we're like, all right, there's, there's a business here. Let's put this stuff in a bottle and let's sell it. But then at that point we knew, um, you know, how are we going to market this stuff? So that's when we yeah. took to technology and we've got this device in our pocket called an iPhone. Yeah. So we just stuck it in front of our face and started making videos. That was the thing, like whether, you know, whatever, you know, creator that, that we saw basically said, you know, just start documenting what you're, what you're doing. And if there's an audience for it, they'll, they'll gravitate towards it and it'll grow. So we literally just... Let's let's actually let's we saw this it. coffee brand called Black Rifle Coffee. <laughs> yeah. and we're like, let's do what these guys are doing, but with spices and, and butchering and meat. butchering and meat. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I, it's but it doesn't matter what you're into. Like, I can watch you guys cut meat like for hours. It's just like, oh, yeah, nice so that, sharp knife. Yeah, the YouTube yeah. thing was yeah. like, it was it was kind of crazy how it started. Like we we started with just. Um, there was an event at a sports, uh, a, a sports shop and they wanted us to come out and uh, show people how to butcher up a deer. So it was like a fall day or whatever. And it was going to be warm that day. And then they kind of got cold feet and they were like, no, we don't, we're not sure how well it'll be received or whatever. So we're like, well, let's just video it and we'll just do it ourselves. So we just like one take selfie style. It was, it wasn't even like camera was in, you know, horizontal. It wasn't, wasn't horizontal, it was vertical and everything. So um, we threw it, was it on. a really, really bad video yeah. looking, looking back at it. But at the time it was, it's pretty much what launched everything. Yeah. Cause it was, um, it was on Facebook and then it went to like, I don't know, half a million views or something. And stuff's so like, I, we had a YouTube channel, but it had like one video, like a tour of our shop or whatever. So, so that's like, I'm going to put it on YouTube and see what happens. And that was like 2016. So he, he threw it on there and we forgot about it. And like, couple months later, it's like, you're, he was like, have you, have you seen it? It's like over a half a million views on YouTube now. It's like, okay, well people like, they, they like watching this stuff. So we just started butchering. We were already doing it anyway, but we just started filming it. And I would just get out of my phone and, and we, we would edit it or anything. We just one take and, you know, um, Seth would do most of the cutting and 
Um, I would talk over it or whatever. And it turns out that people were really digging it. Like you said, JT, like it's fun to watch it get fabricated. You, also don't, you realize you come to this point where you realize you don't know. That's what happened with me. Is sure. I'm like, well, buying yeah. tomahawks. And I'm like, what the fuck is a tomahawk? I need to know. I need to know what, where, what part of the fucking cow is this? Yeah. Like, and and it, also like, I got on this kick of, 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 you know, I wanted to try and make my own baked ham, but I didn't know what part of the pig that was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that I watched your guys as full butcher of a pig. Like, and those are things that we didn't even, you know, we forgot we do because we, you know, we forgot we learned them, but like, if you, if you're not around the, the animals, you don't know. And then obviously like hunting is really popular and do with uh, the cow's organs. Like which organs do you save? Which, what, what do you use them for? Like, sure. so when you, when you got the cow first, what are you taking out first? Um, so like the whole process, like from start to finish. Just, yeah. Okay. So you, you know, you knock it in the head. The first thing you're going to do is bleed it out. So like we have uh, a hoist there and we lift it up. You use and blood then, for anything? No. Um, I mean, we work with a company that does, uh, rendering. So hundred percent of the animal gets used for something. Yeah. Pet um, food, cosmetics, sure, you name yeah. it. So we, uh, which yeah, the, where hi- the hides go? Well, see the hides. That's something that that's really hurting the industry right now. Is the hides have very little value. We need used more to, leather goods in the United States. Yeah, for it sure. Used, it yeah, used to be they were really high value. You could almost get um, as much value out of the hide as it as like the cost to butcher the cow. So like if you brought us a cow um, back in the day, it was you you know like say. Uh, the sixties, um, the hide was, was basically the fee to slaughter it. If the butcher got keep the hide. Wow. Yeah. Well, what's going on there? Why is leather not used anymore? Um, leather. Yeah. So I would say that that just probably Fake has leather. a lot to do with we'll the, see. that it's been demonized. Some of the, like the animal goods or whatever, which I mean, it should be a one, one, you know, you take the meat, you have the hide. Somebody's eating the yeah. meat. Somebody Look uses the Look what happened hide. to the dairy industry. No, you talked about, you talked about almond milk. I mean, look how that's taken over milk. Nobody thought that would happen. So that is a concern for us, you know, like what's going to happen in the meat industry. You saw it happen with hides. You see it, you know, with leather, you see it happen with milk. And then all of a sudden you have these meat substitutes. Yeah. You know? I mean, so that, like, like that Beyond Meat company, I remember coming across their stock ticker and I was like, I read a story on them. I'm like, fake meat, dude. Like they grew like a thousand percent. Yeah. It's, it's crazy, quick, man. Which, yeah. So every, our jobs educate the public. Every you know, vegan that, gets, more that gets drunk eats a hamburger. So I yeah. think there's something deep down inside <laughs> yeah. of us that it's like, I might do it for the fad part of it. And hopefully that's just what it is. But well, and that's interesting because our YouTube channel, we get tons of comments about, you know, that somebody's like, Hey, I've been vegan for 20 years. I watched your video. I'm going to go buy a steak. So it's like, that's cool. Yeah. You know? But back to the process. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. like yeah. once we, once the uh, blood drains out of it, um, I take the head off and then we move it over. So we're USDA inspected. So there's an inspect- Each animal gets an autopsy, basically. Um, somebody that's trained to look for, you know, anomalies that tell them that the animal's not healthy. But we move that over. And um, so it's got the tongue and the cheek meat and everything like that in it. And, um, and we strip that stuff off. But um, then the carcass goes down onto what we call skinning cradle. And then Seth skins the hide off of it. And, um, and then we hang... That's early morning. First in the morning? Yep. First in the so morning. So like... Yeah. Walking onto a slaughter floor, it's um, how many? How many of you guys taking out a day just to, to uh, hang up and, and we'll do about floor. fifteen head. Wow, uh, combine like cows and pigs mm-hmm. and a bison hours. and whatever. Sure, yeah. Yep. Um, so once you get it back, you uh, you lift it up with no hide on it, and then you split the belly open and take the entrails out. Um, yeah, so then organs come out like liver, uh, heart. Those those things get used for well, we sell them for people if people want to eat them. Yeah, but liver, liver not. Is- yeah. Nice, right? Oh, yeah. If there's any, how, how big's cow liver? Big. Uh, yeah, that's like eight 30, pounds, seven, eight pounds. Yeah, it depends once you trim yeah. it down. But the, um, so then, you know, obviously you have the carcass, but we take the organs and whatever we can't sell is, is human food. We make pet food out of. What do you do with the heart? Do people eat the heart? Um, they do. Like, um, you know, it's, it's pretty much just like a roast. But, um, <laughs> really? Yeah. Like, so you mentioned JT, like if you butcher something, like just slicing something off of it right away for its, age and it's got rigor or whatever. It's not great. The heart, ironically, like we were at our hunting cabin one year and we, (laughs) we had all our kids with us and we had a campfire going. It was, it was like around lunchtime and this deer just like, it must've wanted to die because it like walks out. (laughs) It didn't have a chance. Down the trail. My shotgun was too close. (laughs) And and like, it's like deer, boom, 
boom, down it goes. Seth shot it. Um, so hey. they, these kids ran over and we took that thing and we, you know, we field dressed it. And within less than... It was say, during hunting season, by the way. Yeah. So yeah. I was yeah. uh, glad you yeah. had there that. Was, it was all legal. Yep. Within <laughs> five <laughs> minutes, we had that, um, that heart sliced in, on our fire. And it was like tenderloin. So wow. the heart, yeah. I mean, next time you're out in the backcountry, Logan, try blood it. in that animal five minutes prior. Yeah. And we were <laughs> get that heart out, slice it up, so the throw heart, it right on a campfire. Um, it can be really good. And we got we got a ton of uh, people that eat the deer hearts and recipes and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. um, I'm a big yeah. fan. I had you said I I had elk heart uh, a couple of years ago. It and looks good. It's really good. Um, Paul Bark, one of our fishing guys, is also an incredible cook. And he. I'm probably going to butcher the type of fat it is, but it's the fat that encases the lungs. The call fat. Mm-hmm. The call fat. Yeah. So he wrap, he oh, sliced yeah. up the heart, wrapped it up in that call fat, and then just did like a simple batter on it and threw it in the frying pan. And like, it's oh amazing. my God, it's so good, man. Yeah. Dude, I was I was watching this documentary called Magnificent Seven and the the, the Indian. In that. <laughs> is that a documentary? He, he, ate, he ate the heart and then he offered it to everybody there else. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was, was right. It made me want to eat heart, though. So and then I went and watched your YouTube I, channel for another yes, three hours. If you if you come to our shop and and you want to work the kill floor, we do have a rite of passage. Ooh, so which one? Is I think that? Scott it's, was going to mention it. Uh, you've got to eat a, a raw chunk of bison liver. I, I mean, would do that. We right? make our yeah. kids do it too. Yeah, I would like do that for fun. Dude. Yeah, it's your I initiation process. And, and, stop and, eating the liver. So yeah. it's kind of funny, like <laughs> you know. The, sounds the, delicious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The cows that we butcher are um, pretty much all, um, you know, steers. Yeah. They've had their testicles removed. Not lobsters. Not lobsters. Not lobsters. <laughs> we'll yeah, yeah, that. That's coming. Yeah. But the, yeah. the bison that we do are all bulls. Okay. Um, and then the, the, our kids, they, um, they will cut the testicles off of those things and they'll throw them on the trigger within like, you know, as soon as the slaughter day is over. So we're doing our best to like, make sure that, that the we, next raise generation. Them, we raise them right. Yeah. Is eating. Is eating. Yeah. Yeah. Bull testicles. I, I want to try some bison balls. Yeah. They're, what does it taste the, like? The we can send you not, some. The texture's not super great, um, but their flavor's not bad. I mean. You're not convincing me. No. <laughs> There's a lot the texture's better. horrible. Yeah. The flavor's I mean, okay. If you had a bison, what's, the, what's the fucking advantage to eating it? <laughs> if you had a bison filet and a testicle in front of me, I'd, I'd choose the filet. Yeah. Bison filet is the greatest thing I've it's ever had. It's the best thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I just, I walked into that meat market we were in today, Bergheim Meat Market, and they had this, this just bright red bison. T- what is that? It calls like, out to you, doesn't it, JT? I was like, yeah. I need that. Mm-hmm. And I cooked that very rare with a lot of butter and then, you know, just had some meat chewies. Yeah. That was it. It's amazing. Are bison a little bit more difficult to raise? They're extremely more difficult to raise. Is that why we chose cow over bison? I always wondered why. Like as I think a culture, so. as, in, as America, be, yeah. like we were like, wow. hey, we have all these bison. They're way bigger. They're way cooler. The hides are better. But we're going to go with these dumber ones. Cow, you got to get into the, politi- get into the yeah. politics of that because the, you know, the government wanted to suppress the American Indian. So they took their food source away by, mm-hmm. they were literally, I, I don't recall all the numbers, but it was, it was a mass, you know, decimation of the bison herd. Wow. Um, so bison are the native bovine to this planet. Yeah. Um, they're in the same family as beef. Um, not like elk, for example, they're not bovine. But um, they, uh, they're our native beef, essentially. Everything else is imported from, from Europe. Um, but what's, but inter- with regard to- what's interesting is the USDA doesn't recognize them as domestic cattle. What? Yeah. So they charge us. Um, yeah. Isn't, what that, they, isn't that crazy? Like an exo- Here's the crazy thing. They, back in the, um, in the late nineties, when we were butchering a lot of ostrich, they were classified as exotics. And so was bison. Well, the USDA, um, decided to transfer the ostrich. So what we have is called the mandatory meat inspection. Um, so by, so anything that falls into that umbrella is taxpayer pays for the inspection of it. Um, beef, pork, things that are more commonly yeah. consumed. Well, they decided to transfer ostrich into that category. Um, and, and it was no longer an exotic and they left bison as an exotic. So now when we butcher bison, um, we actually have to pay for what they call, um, you know, exotic slaughter 
So we have to pay the government then, to inspect them. Which is then reflected in the price. So if you see bison meat in the store, I mean, that's one of the reasons why it is more expensive. Why are these because you're paying. agencies so fucking stupid? Makes well, no even if it started, you know, in the, <laughs> that's a great yeah. question. There's USDA. No way to, we don't have enough time in, in, yeah. in our lives to try to get through that yeah. one. But um, yeah, so, but as far as raising bison, Logan, yeah, they're extremely, diff- the saying is you can make a, a buffalo go anywhere he wants to go. So if they don't want to leave a trailer, we've, we've shot so many of those right where they stood because they won't go where you want them to go. Or if they do want to go through or over something, we have a, um, a, like a corral and it's solid. It's made out of like a, a grain bin type thing. It's huge. If, um, and it's, I think it's seven and a half feet. I mean, you can just barely reach to the top of the thing. And we had one that went over it. And there's nowhere to hook his feet or anything. He just got his front legs over it and he went right over. He went out into the wild blue yonder. My dad and I actually went out. Um, it was like in the fall and the, all the cornfields were up or whatever. We couldn't find him. And we have this um, cell tower there on our property. So I climbed up it trying to like look down in the corner. I couldn't locate him. Well, then um, somebody spotted him and my dad and I went out um, and I had a 30 30 and we were walking down this lane with cornfields on both sides. And, you know, my, I don't know why my dad let me have the gun instead of himself, but you know, he gets really amped up in these situations, but we walk to like the end of the lane and I kind of peek around the end of the cornfield and, and I see it. And I, I turned to my dad and I was like, there it is. And he's like, well, shoot it. And I turned back <laughs> Drop around, it. And this thing is barreling around the corner. And just like the national geographic stuff, I cracked this thing when it was about five yards away and it dumped right at our feet. Now, I don't know if it was trying to go into us or past us or whatever, but we were between wherever it was going. Yeah. But yeah, we, we had to put one down like that in, in the wild, but yeah. So, and our dad was attacked by one and spent some time in the hospital, you know, wow. getting that all figured out, but they, yeah, they're, they're, they're undomesticated. They, they Unpredictable. can't, they can't like, be extremely uh, aggressive. Yep, They are. And so, you know, if you keep them in their pen, keep them happy and stay away from them, you know, with plenty of food, they'll, they'll basically do their thing. But as soon as you, start trying to move them or load them. Dude, they they get see, real like, ambitious. You see these, pe- these tourists like in Yellowstone. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Like, what are you doing? Yeah, take well, a selfie with that bison. Go for yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, look what at that you guys big was, old hairy cow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, you guys were saying like, do not turn your back on them. Exactly. Oh, no. Yeah. 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 Any livestock is, you know, like, well, large livestock is so much bigger and it's all muscle. So they, they can hurt you. Like people get hurt by horses and cows all the time. Um, I had my teeth kicked out from a, from a cow when I was 15. Ooh. And so all these teeth are fake. You trying to get in there and milk it? No, <laughs> I was like, I pole? was just trying, he was to, trying to get it in the <laughs> knock box. It, you know, and, and as crazy as this sounds like, and I'm not trying to, you know, whatever, but it's when you walk onto that slaughter floor and you have X number of animals, it's, it's you or them. At the end of the day, they all got to go in the cooler. Yeah. And you're, you know, what's standing between that, you know, they, they don't always want to cooperate. Like it's, it's very humane and we have a systematic approach to it. And of course it's whether this counts, you know, for whatever it's, it's over, you know, there's government oversight through the whole process. And that's a real hot button right now, the humane handling, but because videos surfaced and they've dialed down, but you know, people abusing well, the veal and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, they, they don't takes, always want, they don't always want you to go, you know, also go put, knock them in the head and taking all their j- delicious meat out from underneath. Yeah. The, you know, all it hide. takes is one employee, a, a, a large packer to do something that happens to get on video and it filters all the way down through everybody. Yeah. The industry, everybody has to pay industry for it. gets plowed by it. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was, be like it was, if somebody was like, you know, putting rat turds in coffee and then oh all of God. a sudden you yeah. guys got to explain why you don't yeah. have rat turds in your coffee, you know? <laughs> right. Well, I was curious because I'm surprised that YouTube lets you guys put up videos of just straight. Yeah. Butchering. You want to speak to that stuff? Yeah. So um, in our, our top four most viewed videos on YouTube, um, there's been three of them that have been demonetized because of the content. So we did one like uh, how, to, how to gut a deer how to skin a beef and those, they, they allow them to go up, but there's no ad revenue from them. Right. Um, 
But Google will still run ads on them. Google will run ads. And that's the remarkable thing. Right. But they won't get anything <laughs> No hypocrisy us. there. So we've got about 12 million uh, video views on YouTube that we get nothing for. Or but not monetized. Not monetized. <laughs> but we never started with that in mind. And no. I think that's one thing about our channel is like, we, we're just doing what we do. And, and it, and it, I think that authenticity yeah, learning comes through. And teaching it is like, dude, that's no one else is doing it. And no, again, like, like so the hypocrisy is exactly right. Yeah, mm -hmm. how I, many people in that company are eating meat? Like, and you don't want to show how this fucking process happens. Sure. Yeah, and I think by shedding light on it, like Seth said, with the you know when a vegan comments on our channel, and they're like, you know, I watched this, I wasn't repulsed by it. You know, I think there's some dialogue out there for people that that don't eat meat because they, they, they don't see the transparency maybe that we show. And once we show that, maybe we, I know, I know we have converted some. No, oh, absolutely. Commented. They come into the store. Right. And so, I mean, there, that's, that's good, but. How are we looking up there, Sergeant Best? On target, on time, boys. Fire for flip. If people know, if they can, if they can be comfortable with, you know, how the animal was raised, who handled it during the process and what they are going to, you know, be intaking into their body, then they're, they're much more, you know, easy to, con to convert versus somebody that just goes to the chain grocery store and has no idea where that animal came from or how it was raised or how it was processed. So. So you guys, um, you guys are from Ohio, mm -hmm. correct? Right? Um, and you also, in addition to doing all the butchering and the season, like you guys got a, a good stable of cooking content yeah, so going, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's one thing we always try to do is carry it over to the cooking yeah. process. So I'm curious, like, you know, there's obviously, you know, Texas has its own style of barbecue and the be East cooking Coast for us today. And yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> well, the Texas guys are always the first to comment on our videos. I will tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so when like it comes to barbecue. Yeah. What's like the, the culture of food that you guys got going on in Ohio? Ohio yeah. So barbecue is massive right now. It's huge. So you think about, you know, your charcoal grills, like the big green egg, and then your pellet grills, the Traegers. Um, we're, we're a dealer for both. But in the last two to three years, we've seen such an uptick in, it's especially- It's becoming a new hobby. It is. It's a like, hobby, but yeah. especially with COVID- because people, you know, they're not going to the restaurant. They're staying at home. They're entertaining their friends there. Well, they need a device to cook, to barbecue on. So, you know, they, they snag the grill and then the meat comes in, then the spices. And it's, I mean, it's a closed loop. Once, once we gain a customer um, with a grill sale, they, that we, we will see them regularly back in the shop for all the other items. Yeah. Every butcher shop out there, maybe I'm, uh, maybe I should keep this a secret. But every butcher sell shop grills. sell grills, <laughs> sell grills, sell charcoal, sell, I mean, sell everything that person needs right. to, to entertain their friends. Yeah. Yeah. The, the meat market that we went to today, I mean, they sold the, the fuel sources, but you got to go home and put that on a fire somewhere. Yeah. So, you know, we like to say meat over a wood fire. That's to, you know, for as far as the culture, I understand like different parts of the country have different culture, but we always like to say meat over a wood fire. So by that, we mean, you know, whether it's lump charcoal, um, not the briquettes, whether it's the wood pellets, um, whether it's a campfire. campfire or, you know, we've, we've been messing around with the birch barrel a little bit. Um, so yeah, we, we love to say meat over wood fire. That's the best way that you're going to get a good, yeah. good eating yeah. experience out of it. And just there's different mediums that make it easier on the, you know, the user, the Traeger, for example, it's going to turn out perfect food every time. People are going to, people are, are more inclined to use it. So they're, now they're yeah. buying meat more and more and more. And they are. And like, and you know, so we want to empower people too. Like if they buy, you know, meat, they take it home. You want to impress your friends. You're doing a brisket or something like that. You know, you're the, you're the star of the party at that well, point. So like part of being the star of the party too, is maybe cooking something that someone's never had before. So that's like when you come into our shop, we can cut you something that maybe, you know, you're not going to find at a restaurant. You're certainly not going to find it at your grocery store. Um, and I think that other shops that maybe watch our content, it probably drives them a little bit crazy because 
uh, maybe we cut something and produce, uh, you know, we cook something that they don't know, they don't know how to do that. So they have people then that are coming into their stores asking for a specific cut, not knowing how, you know, to produce it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, and that's one thing with our channel is we, we, we want to try to educate people, but keep it, um, you know, new and, and entertaining and, you know, just new ideas and things that they've never seen. Yeah. And so as far as like the style of cooking mm -hmm. goes, do you guys have anything that's kind of unique to either what you do or your region? Uh, no, me, like, I mean, where we're from, we're in rural, you know, Ohio. There's more dairy cows and cornfields than there are people. So it'll always be meat and potatoes. Now you're, uh, yeah. So you're, do you, do you own the animals or are they delivered to you? Both. Okay. Because I, I, I just, something I think would be really cool to see uh, in the future is if you guys took like three pigs and you raised them on each different food mm -hmm. and then raised them up and butchered them. And then you had a panel of people like, Try how does this one You taste? can feed one yeah. acorns, yeah. you can feed one donuts and you can feed one, you know, Brains, yeah, and see, yeah. see, yeah. see what that like, like, like experiment with some sure. of the stuff where it's like okay, different textures and this, tastes, and this this pig spent its whole life just eating corn. Mm -hmm. You know what? What does the meat look like? How does it? And you're 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 butchering them all at the same time, so you're like, how does this? How does this look? How does this differ? Like, I think that that would be fascinating. So much like, about yeah. the quality of of meat is how the animal was raised, what it was fed, and how it's processed, because you, you you're just not gonna get. Um, the same thing, like the meat market we went to today, I guarantee this meat's going to be phenomenal. You could just tell just by yeah. looking at it. You're not going to HEB or Publix right. or something. But that, you know, and it, it all, it all boils down to those, those things, you know, how it's raised, what it's fed and how it's processed. Are you guys on the, the Wagyu train at we, all? We, we are. Yeah. So, yeah. um, there's a lot there, um, with regard to the, 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 the Wagyu that we process and sell, um, we, in, in Ohio, there's a farm, um, Sakura farms that, that they were one of the first ones in Ohio to really start messing around with the genetics and stuff. So we do butcher their livestock and sell it in our store. Um, fantastic. The flavor, the mouthfeel is, is very unique. It's like a velvet like a velvety smooth Explain kind of like what the difference of Wagyu is to regular. So we have a, we have a video about this yeah. and I'll try to get some of it. Um, so with regard to the, the, the Wagyu cattle, so there's a region in Japan um, where the, these genetics come, come from and the, the cow, they didn't even eat the cows and they didn't even know that they, they had this, this cow. It's got a genetic um, predisposition to be, and I forget all the science, it's in the video, but it puts a lot of fat into the intermuscular fat. So basically Marbling. it yeah. laces its own muscle with this fat. And we um, all know fat is flavor flavor. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And it's a mouthfeel too. So they didn't realize, I think until like, I think it was in the fifties. And again, you'll just have to go watch the video because I did my research then and I've forgotten it since, but they uh, started butchering these things and um, they were like, wow, we have like, the world's best cow. And they exported only like four bowls or literally, something. <laughs> literally designed to be a steak. Yeah. yeah. And they realized once the Japanese government realized once they exported like four of them to the US, they're like, yeah, we're not doing that anymore. We're keeping it here. So then it just made it like even more desirable and more rare. So now what they do is they, they, they have like, I think the Japanese government keeps like their 12 best bulls under lock and key and they closely oh, yeah. handle the genetics and everything. So, but what has come to America, you know, they're, they're able to get like, you know, some of the, uh, the genetics from those original bulls and I don't know how it's all regulated, but they, it's, it's cattle that have a predisposition, a genetic switch in them to put a lot of fat into their inner muscle, in, in, in inner muscle. And then when you eat it, it's like eating velvet, cake. Yeah, it's, 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 it's buttery. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, and um, so, yeah, it'll probably um, stick around for a while. There's, there's an argument that when mixed with like our American beef, it can be um, in straight Wagyu people will scream at this, but it gives it more of a, of a beefy side too, because 
Wagyu doesn't have a real big beef flavor. So if you mix you it You almost with, get the best of both worlds. Yeah, if you the mix two. the two. So you're saying and if you we go, mix it, it's better. Yeah, yeah. if you go well, to like I, what they I call it. I have to assume that's happened, right? Doing everything better. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So what is that called when they mix the Wagyu with the... American Wagyu or F1 okay. is like 50-50. So it's 50% like, you know, American Angus or whatever mixed with the Wagyu what's genetics. what's Akashi? So, that's from a, probably a certain region in Japan. So they have these four different um, region. Well, Kobe is the region, but they have like these four different sub regions or sub species or sub breeds in that category. And they, um, they're, they're just like, they have to come with a certificate and they, they're, that's big. I did, big I did watch something on that. Like yeah, when big, you're, big when dollars. you're butchering a, a Wagyu, like it has a grade and a yep. certificate. And, 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 and they are importing some of the actual cuts. And, and if you go to a, a, a place that has that, those direct imports, they're going to produce. It'll be reflected in the price too. Yeah. You're, okay. you're if it's be significantly paying, higher. Yeah. If you're paying $400 deal. a steak, then it's going to come with, it better come with certificate. What's the best yeah. steak you've ever had? A bison porterhouse. Really? Yeah. And the reason why it's got the, the filet, the mm -hmm. port, when you look at a porterhouse, um, so um, there's a, a shape of a bone shaped as a T. And so T bone and porterhouse share it. On Which the one, doesn't make it a T bone. Most people get confused. Even though yeah. it has a bone in it shaped like a T. Right. A so there's then, yeah. yep, there's two, there's T bone and porterhouse. The porterhouse um, on one side of that, that, um, Bone shaped like a T is the bigger side. That's the strip loin. And then on the smaller side is the filet. So, Which we're going to do a video about that because a lot of people don't understand. Just explain the difference. Right. A lot of people don't understand, especially like in the, in the custom world, which I mean by a meat processor who brings in an animal for a local farmer, cuts it up, and then returns it back to them for their freezer. They sell it to a, you know, another individual. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that when you cut bone-in steaks, you're going to have a porterhouse and T-bone. But if you cut those, that same short loin boneless, you have a filet and strip. So people don't understand that, you know, we're going to do a video. Okay. Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, okay. because what, what will happen is uh, the customer will come back to you and let's say he requests uh, both. And it's like, well, you can do that if you, you know, cut half of them bone in and half of them boneless. But um, if they request porterhouse and T-bone, they call you and say, hey, where's my filet and strip? You do in fact have that. It's just, has a bone attached to it. So interesting. But it's yeah. interesting you were saying something, Jared, about the, the, um, or in Logan, you were talking about sp specific cutting or excuse me, cooking geographically, you know, where you're at. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, obviously Texas, you have your brisket and things like that. Um, the Midwest, like Seth mentioned, you know, kind of more of a steak and potatoes, like growing up on farms and stuff, you more, more or less ate like the cow and you, you know, a lot of hamburger and stuff like that. But, um, it is, and usually the coast stuff starts to creep in it, because of the fact that like there's channels like ours and then there's, um, you know, the cooking mediums that are out there today. Uh, it used to be, you know, your uncle cut a barrel in half and he smoked meat, right? You know, like, like he was the guy and he, yeah. there was some magic to it. Um, the point of entry is a lot easier now with just some of the with grills, the grills that are available. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, like the Trader's grill, it being, for example. It now being a fad and hobby yeah, because yeah, so you, you can, can watch find it. it. You yeah, can sure. find it different places. Um, I think it would be interesting sometime to look at like even globally, like where animals are butchered, how they're butchered, what they're doing with them then. Um, that's That would be kind of fun down the road. But, but what's interesting one, is uh, nobody bought a brisket 10 years ago in our shop. No. Because now, I mean, now, now it's everywhere. Yeah. We can't yeah. keep them in our store. More things like, like in Denver, Texas, steak. you guys have been smoking briskets for centuries. Didn't Oodles. it used to be a throwaway portion of the cow? Oh yeah. Grind it up. Went yeah. Into hamburger. Yeah. 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 Oh. We ground a lot of briskets. So bison porterhouse though. Bison porterhouse. Tell me about this. Two inches so thick. We, it was, you that's, know, that's, yep. that's, yeah. that's, that's butchered nice. Yep. Thick. So like if we take one of our, our bison bulls about two, two and a half years old off our farm and, um, you know, we slaughter it and, and we hang it for like a week. We, we just recently did this in a, in a video, but we took like the two inch thick porterhouse and we cooked it over an open fire. And it was just, I mean, it's just to die for. Cause bison, they're, they're like a sweet, sweeter version. Like even the, like the Softer smell of them. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like the sweet. Even, so, even being a bull. Yeah. Cause you know, Scott talked about not castrating our bison. So you would think that being a bull would be a tougher meat, but it's not mm. at all. I mean, it'll. Yeah. It's even less other like, away. you know, there's no gaminess to it. 
Um, it has, it shares some of the characteristics of wild game and just the feel um, and a little bit of the flavor, but it's, it's just, it's very sweet and, and mellow and I'm tender. extremely like, I, I go very rare. Like, oh yeah. Like you very should. rare. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <Still cold. laughs> and I think that's, that's been a big improvement too. Like as a kid or whatever, you chewed on some steak that was brown throughout and like, you said, I don't like steak. Yeah. But now I think people are cooking stuff a lot better. Um, well, I mean, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the longer you cook it, the more nutrients that get taken out of it. Too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's rare. It's rare meat. Good for you. Uh, but look at us. Even, <laughs> yeah, but I got a lot of blood. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the challenges though, that uh, I think was exposed during COVID was the lack of skilled laborers we have for this industry. Really? Um, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a tough job. It's a dangerous job. The, the, it's a lot the, of hours. It's a lot mm-hmm. of hours. Um, it's hard there's work. No, there, there's ways to, you know, so like we automated some of our packaging, which helps, but converting livestock is never going to really get any easier. Yeah, right. It's, it's, and it's and, so and of course, the farmers are involved too. I mean, we don't want to leave them out. Somebody's got to raise the thing. But even like wild game, for example, like when you dump something in a heap, like an elk or, or a large animal, there's a lot of work that starts yeah, it's, when it you get there. It always has blown my mind that food stays so like the prices that it is. Mm-hmm. Like I can get five pounds of chicken legs, chicken drumsticks for $4. Like it's, it's crazy, like, isn't it? How? How, Which, is, how did the, you raise eight animals yeah. for weeks and are making a profit off of $4 for the five animals yeah. in a package? The poultry industry is very highly automated. Um, and, and I can't speak to much of that because we don't, we don't um, butcher poultry. Yeah. Which another weird thing is the ostrich fell under the poultry division of the USDA. Even it's though it's a, a red meat. Yeah, it's a really? rat type. Yeah. yeah, it's red. It's And the, the bones are hollow. Say, they have like a honeycomb. I so did like, notice that, Laura, I have, when I, I killed one of my turkeys and I went to take it to get processed and no one will process birds. Mm-hmm. It's like tough. They're too dirty. Yeah. But the poultry industry is really heavily automated and they can pump a lot so that, you know, and then the pork is kind of getting that way too. There's this massive plants that do, you know, tens of thousands a head of, of pork in so a day. So what, what happened with COVID was the big packers got shut down because they had COVID cases yeah, roll, so roll through. Not- yeah, so they just stopped producing. Yeah. So all of a sudden we had people driving, you know, hours to come to our shop that we had never seen before. Yeah, because, did you sell yeah. out the first like I mean, two it weeks was like the apocalypse twice. showing up. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we uh, these people. Were, up the, we almost up just the, went to the bank the and closed the doors. We never, we, yeah. Oh yeah, we, gosh, but we yes. never, we never um, upped our price. So we no. kept our price. Yeah. That was that something we weren't going to do? We, yeah. We're not going to take advantage no, of the public. No gouging. Nope. So, um, but we did. We called every uh, farm that we're partnered with, and we said, if you have it in your field, we want it. Bring it here. So we doubled our production. We doubled our, our slaughter. Um, but yeah, I mean, we did would you keep a lot of those customers though. A lot of we them did. Now they're like, I ain't going back. But yeah. what that, I mean, <laughs> and, and so we would fill our meat cases in the morning and, and by the evening they were empty again. I mean, yeah. this, this yeah. was a, a daily, cabinets, daily rotation. The cabinets that we merchant, like when you, when you look at where we went today, yeah. at least, at least 10, uh, at least 15 times that we oh, have yeah. in our store. Yeah. We yeah. have these cabinets that, that literally will hold three or four cows in them. Yeah. And it was frost. There was frost in You'd there. You stare at the floor every yeah. every night. Gone. Yeah. Um, it was it was kind of fun at first, then but then it was like, like, dang, you know, I need to hire somebody. Yeah. So, <laughs> but the other thing, um, but co- that's that's tough because the learning curve is is it's a long it's a long one. So for the actual fabrication, not so much. If you find you know anybody with a few skills, chefs or anything, they can they've they've been around a knife. Yeah. But the, the slaughter step is not it, is 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 a lot more difficult because not in the other thing is not everybody can handle it. Yeah. If you come like into our shop, into a looking, slaughter floor and the smells and the sounds and the things, and they 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 might just turn and walk away. Mm-hmm. If you come into our shop looking for a job and we bring you on, I would say two years minimum. Yeah, just to get just just to get you to the point where we we would feel comfortable enough to to you know let you go on your own. But yeah, like Scott said, from the slaughter. To the, all the fabrications, to the, and it's multi species, right? So you got to be able to learn. Right. And then if you if you bring in the for the further processed items, so if we bring in the curing and the smoking and and that side of it, um, hot and then, dogs, and then hot dogs, and then you add in the um, 
you know, the, the HACCP training with the USDA and, and all that Our stuff. Our industry so, is, yeah. is overregulated it's, to the max. So, and it's a problem. And they don't know how to dial it down for small oh, business. Mm -hmm. it's, it's unbelievable. So what we've learned um, over the last year with the big packers getting shut down is there's definitely a need for more small shops around the country. Um, but the problem is, is the entry level is so high. So you have, you know, you have your inspection that you're dealing with, but then you also have your cost of the, the machinery. I mean, everything's stainless steel. Then you have to have, you know, whether you're on a septic and you have a water treatment or you're in the, in the city, so you can tie into the city sanitary because you're dealing with blood and you're in all this stuff. So uh, most, most of the time when you tell somebody what the entry level is, it, it distracts them from it's, even trying. It's a lot easier to open a restaurant and get through that regulatory process even right. though you're serving prepared foods, like you're literally putting that food in front of somebody than it is to do processed foods that are, you know, going to get cooked at home. But if the government was smart, they would, they would loosen up on the regulations on guys like us because um, that's just one more thing that's going to distract people from wanting to do it. And there could potentially be a massive problem in this country just feeding all the Americans yeah. because there isn't yeah. anybody to do it. When, when, so what are we going to do? Eat, yeah. eat grass? Here, Brazil. Brazil is sneaking up on us. Yeah. Buying everything. Fucking they so own it man. all. Yeah. Brazil owns the food. Yeah. yeah. Confirm. <laughs> <laughs> well, absolutely. I mean, what what's your animal going to eat? You know, it's going to eat corn and soybeans and things like that. And if those are all coming out of Brazil and then well, they're raising no, the no, cattle Brazil too. Brazil has been buying up. I mean, they own a majority of the United States based chicken. They own a mm -hmm. ton oh, of yeah. the beef. Well, um, if you control the, I mean, we just talked about the American Indian losing their, their bison. Yeah. If you, if you lose your food, you know. So our solution to that is more people need to educate themselves how to do this themselves at home. Um, we recently, over the last couple of years, Meat Your Maker uh, has a line of meat processing equipment um, that is fantastic for the home user. I need, so, I need to make sausage. It's, yes. They have everything. So you, you need get, that you in your a, life. You can get a grinder. You can get yeah. a stuffer. You <laughs> I, I want machines, all of it. You can get all of it. If you've got a Traeger grill, you can do your own smoking at home. You can make your own sticks, summer sausage, hot dogs, yeah, you name yeah. it. So when you go out you know, and you, and you shoot something yourself, you, you then can take that and produce it into all those items like we do in our commercial shop at home. So that's, that's like- well, I'm that's, coming up there. I need to come up there for a week. You're invited. Absolutely. I want to do a cow. I want to do, I, I love lamb, by the way. Like lamb is the jam. We got some mm -hmm. great lamb. Yeah. Yeah. And lamb snacks is what I call them. It's a little of your Hollywood, uh, Hollywood little seasoning. Little lollipop chop. rosemary. Yeah. yeah. You just eat it in the pool. Yeah. It's perfect. I love what? it. What? What, Dave? <laughs> You've had one in the pool. Eating lamb lollipops in the pool. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah, I want to learn it all. Absolutely. And then, you know, we talked about something today. Maybe they can they can learn too. Absolutely. Yes. That'd be exciting. An exclusive yeah, package. Little VIP package. Little VIP package. Come up there and get see the beer and butchers. Butcher. How fun would that be? A I day like camp? A day camp? camp we'll, we'll give you, we'll give you, <laughs> I talk about a two year entry level into, you know, our industry. However, in a few days, we could teach you how to take an animal that you shot in your backyard or out in the back country that ended up in a, in a pile, how to convert that into something that go into your freezer in just a couple of days. It might not be the prettiest thing in the world, but you'll be able to eat it and you'll be able to feed your family with it for sure. How many cows do you think you've butchered? In your life. Oh. So um, back, so right now our volume is just for our store because in 2015, yeah. we converted to just doing meats for our own store. Which our dad thought we were absolutely insane, by the way, because yeah. being a you know Vietnam vet and a drill sergeant served with the 173rd, he was not a guy to persuade in anything. So he bought this business. He brought us, us in at a very young age, but he called all the shots. I mean, that's just the way it was. Yeah. And uh, so we did custom meat processing from, you know, the early 90s all the way through 2015. We built a brand and uh, we came to dad and we said, look, you know, we're, we're going to discontinue our custom meat processing. And he, he thought we were absolutely insane. You know, we're <laughs> giving up all this revenue. Um, but, but the thing was, is, is it was, uh, you know, we, it was just wash, rinse, repeat. Yeah. I mean, that's all we did. And there's not a lot of money in it. So uh, in the custom meat processing world, those guys, they're not, they're simply not paid enough. Yeah. No. Um, you're working for pennies 
and you're working and they're hard. getting older. a lot of work and, and they're getting yeah. and if it's too if it's the price is too high people are just not going to do it right you're gonna cut a backstrap out and leave an animal land exactly so 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 uh in 15 when we discontinued the custom and we went to all retail uh we built an addition onto our store we built a brand we did the youtube um but now it's 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 great because dad comes into the shop and he tells us you know he's like man i'm, I'm proud of you guys because it's it's taken it to a level that nobody ever expected. Which you is guys cool, get which to is do cool what to you want to do now, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're exactly right. We're at the mercy of stuff. somebody else. Well, yeah. So yeah. if we look at a block of time from 1995 to uh, 2015, when we did the bulk bulk of our work was you raised the cows and brought them to us, and we so we would it was all turn and burn. We would yeah. load the schedule up. So ten to fifteen thousand. And when we talk, you load the schedule up. We're talking like a year or two schedule. Yeah. So cow, you were on the hamster wheel. We've personally butchered 10 to 15,000 cows and 15 to 20,000 pigs. Um, so that's so, the big, so the big can two. I see a video of you doing it blindfolded? I'm <laughs> doing a full count. Oh, sure. Blindfolded. I, yeah. I want to see. I'll it. show well, you a video on my phone of, uh, <laughs> you know, after we're done of me taking the head off of a pig in under like 20 seconds. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, you, that muscle memory is so remarkable. That's, that what once I mean, that's you, why I want to see it. You would just, like, whenever like our dad always told us to, you know, stop thinking, just do your job. Cause like when we would just like be like, this is just a grind. He said, well, guys like you in Vietnam, I would take my belt off and I would wrap around their neck and I would drag them down the trail if they started thinking too hard about it. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, just stop thinking and, you know, do your job. So you would just literally, you know, you would just blank out and work. And you don't wake but that's, up and you've got, that's oh, yeah. what's kind of come up with a lot of our ideas now. Cause like we're on the floor and we can just, you know, it's just like a big whiteboard for us. We can hash out ideas or come up with different um, creative things to do or flavors or stuff like that. Recipes. But yeah, Which, when you uh, do fall asleep a little bit on the job, your finger looks like mine does right now. Where <laughs> yeah, nice yeah, you talk about on, muscle but, memory and that's exactly what it is because whenever you switch up something that you're not, typically doing is when you're going to hurt yourself. Yeah. yeah. If you, if you have a cut that you, you and you know, it's going to happen, you know, you, you hold something different. It's at a different angle and boom, before you know it. Yep. But the meat industry is all about like, you know, obviously you're going to have a blade in your hand, um, a really n a good knife and then just angles. Like you learn mm -hmm. all the different angles and then crossing that over, like I said, across, you know, seven, eight different species you learn, it just, it's all mapped out in your mind then after so many years that you just, you, you don't even think about it. I mean, this is a, this is a challenge to the viewer. If you've never, if, if you've only purchased your meat at the grocery store, you need to get out and find. Yeah. It's time to go. Find the local, yeah. local guys like you and try this because yeah. I've never gone back. Now that I've got Bergheim there. Yeah, then, absolutely. Before yeah. it was 10 miles, more miles away, I still would go. Well, like, and <laughs> that, that's the thing about like our industry. Like if you find a place like the meat market today and you spend your food dollars there, they're going to respond by, you know, being able to pay themselves a little bit better and, and things are going to improve just like our life improved. And then, you know, as that culture, we, we changed the landscape of that culture. Like we talk about our kids a lot. Like we're, we, we're teaching them that there's, you know, like Logan said, you can kind of be your own boss at it or whatever. And, and we're just stacking those trends of like the barbecuing and the butchering and the spice and all these things, people cooking at home. And, and then just the rewarding factor of like, you know, you know, if, if I hunted it, you know, everybody knows that already. Like, man, there's just something different about eating something that you, you hunted and killed and yourself, whatever. And you, your, you know, family gets to eat it or whatever. It's like, you know, beat your chest stuff. Well, you can, you can start, reverse engineering that from like the point of where it's in a package. And I go back further and I get, maybe I get a bone in brisket and figure out how to, you know, carve it up or I get, um, you know, even one step further and I, I'm just going to get a side of pig for my butcher and see what I can do with yeah. it. And try it out. We're gonna be, yeah. They can come yeah. to your channel and we're going to be making bacon. Yeah. And we like, got a video coming up next week um, where we're actually going to take a pork belly and we're going to show you how using the Traeger grill, how you can cure it and smoke it at home. Wow. So you can, you can go to your local butcher, ask them for a belly. And then before you know it, two weeks later on a Sunday morning, you're slicing up your own bacon and frying it yeah. in a frying pan. Mm, Imagine dude. Christmas. This is like my ham, yeah. baby. Yeah. Like, Let's go. That's what I'm saying. saying. Yeah. I just want to do a ham when I come yeah. out. I've, I've always wanted to. Absolutely. Let's go to the but woodshed and get some dude, bacon. Dude, your guys' seasonings are awesome. I use them all the time. I love Hollywood. Thank you. That's Thank my you. favorite. Um, and, and to find you guys, beardedbutchers.com. 
That's yeah. right. Instagram, all that. Facebook, YouTube. Twitters. Absolutely. Yeah, YouTube, the big one. Yeah. yeah. If you want to learn about cutting meat, go check these guys out because yeah. this is awesome. And we're going to keep that. popping well, it out there. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go cook, Jess. Let's do and it. We have meat. <laughs> we literally have meat on a fire right now. Awesome. Thanks, yeah, guys. Yeah. Let's go eat it.